Abe Haskins. I'm a developer programs engineer at Google on the Firebase team, and I'm here with my friends Larry and Lisa from the Google Assistant team. And today we're going to be talking about building games for mobile and audio on Google. Uh, this is going to be a two-part talk. So the first part is going to be all about mobile, building games for mobile with Google technology. And then the second part is going to be all about building audio games on the Google Assistant using all of our cool technology for that. So we're going to get started, like I said, with the mobile aspect of the game, or of the talk. And we're going to dig into building mobile games on Google via Firebase. To get some general idea of who we're talking to, how many people have heard of Firebase, have some idea of what it is? All right, so about half. That's pretty good. We're going to talk about a handful of different things to make sure that everyone's on the same page about what Firebase is, and then we'll talk about it in a little more depth, what the value is in your game, how you can use it, and you know, what best you can do. So our agenda for my part of the talk, the first half hour, is going to be first, what is Firebase? What, you know, what were we thinking at Google when we made this, uh, this thing? Second, who is Firebase for? Is this something for small game developers? Is it something only for mobile developers? Is it something for gigantic apps? You know, we'll, we'll answer all those questions. And then third, we'll talk about what's happening in Firebase today, what we've been doing recently, uh, what we just recently announced, and maybe a bit about what's upcoming. So first off, what is Firebase? What is Firebase on a high level? And I'm going to generally stay on a fairly high level for most of Firebase. And the reason is that Firebase is a very big thing. If I wanted to go into detail about every single feature, we would be here for the rest of GDC. And there's a lot of other cool stuff here to see. So on, uh, in a simple sense, Firebase is a platform to help you build your game. It's a platform to help you grow your player base. And it's a platform to help you make more money. And what this really looks like is this big chart of a bunch of different features. These are the 15 different Firebase features that come together to make this platform. And depending on who you are, if you are a technical engineer or if you are a marketing person or a business person, different parts of this is going to connect with you in different ways. If you're an engineer, you're going to say, all right, Firebase authentication. I have some idea of what that is, but you might not be as interested in the AdWords integration. And this is because Firebase as a platform is designed to help you grow throughout the entire life cycle of your business. So if you're, you're a small business, you're early on, you're building your game for the first time, you're going to be really interested in the development features of Firebase. If you're a little farther along, you've released a game, you're going to want to grow your user base. That's where the growth uh, pieces come in. And if you're a little farther along, you have some users, and you want to start making a ton of money, that is where these earning features are going to come in. And we'll cover all of these in a bit more depth. But before that, I want to talk a bit about the philosophy of Firebase and what this platform uh, means in terms of the mindset you get in when you're using Firebase. You see here, we have all these features that I've talked about, all the different elements and those develop, grow, and earn pillars. But in the core, we have Firebase Analytics. And it is the core of this graphic, obviously, but it is also a core as a philosophy. What this means is that analytics as a concept, knowing your users and understanding what they're doing, is really, really important to building a product people love. But most analytics solutions stop short of giving you something actionable. You can you know, listen to what people are doing, and you can see, and you can watch them. But a lot of times, it doesn't actually result to changes in that experience for those users. And that's kind of defeating the point. So when we were thinking about building Firebase, we realized that analytics had to be the core, because all of these features tie back to that analytics core. So if you're logging in with authentication, we should use that to enrich our analytical data. If you're in the growth phase and you want to tweak things, you should be able to say, all right, this audience cares about this feature. Let's make it more prominent in our app for them. If we're doing something with Firebase notifications, you should be able to target those audiences, and you should be able to create funnels and all of these things related to every single Firebase feature connecting back to analytics. And on a technical level, that's what this you know, analytics in the center means. But when we're really thinking about it, as analytics as a core, what it means is that your player is your focus. If you're building with Firebase, you're building with a mindset that says, every day, everything I'm building, I'm focusing on my user, and I'm building them an experience where they are empowered 
and they feel like the boss. Because that's what they should do. If you are the main player of a game, it's an experience about you. You know, you're interacting with the world and you might not always be the king of that world or in the biggest, you know, uh, in, in the biggest house in the entire land, but you know that that experience is for you. And Firebase lets you do that. It lets you tailor things and it lets you act on that analytical data that Firebase Analytics is giving you. Again, I can't really talk about every single one of these features in depth. It's just, it would take too much time. But on a high level, the categories are important to remember. We have features for development, learning and growing. And then any given one of these features, you can go jump into online and find documentation about. Uh, and I'll talk about some of them in a bit more depth. So with that more depth, let's, let's dig into that. What is Firebase? on a technical level. I've just told you what our goal is uh, when we were creating this, why we made it the way we did, but I didn't actually say what it was. And what Firebase is, is both a client-side SDK and a bunch of cloud services. These cloud services are a bunch of things we host and we control. So if you're familiar with other cloud providers, uh, you may be just thinking, all right, I go into the cloud and I spin up a VM, and then I still have to write a bunch of code to expose this service to my user, to my client in a reasonable way. Uh, Firebase isn't like that. There's a ton of things on that graph that everyone needs. Everyone needs authentication. There's very, very few apps in the world that don't log in a user. And so the fact that people again and again are rewriting authentication code just doesn't make sense. You have to worry about security. You have to worry about all of these little facets that just waste your time. And I'll, I'll, I'll come back to this in a minute, but this is just another type of focusing on your users, not diverting your focus into technical decisions, not saying, all right, how are we gonna secure these passwords? You don't have to think about that with Firebase. Since we control the servers, we control the communication to the servers, you can trust that Google's using the best of our knowledge to make this secure and safe and scalable. So you just don't have to think about that. When I say the client SDKs, I mean a bunch of client SDKs. These SDKs get embedded in your game, and I'm, as a bit of history, when we started Firebase, we were mostly a web-focused company. Way back in the day, five, six years ago, something like that, we started with building JavaScript SDKs. Over time, we released native SDKs for Android and iOS for people building apps and games natively. Uh, and just recently, last year, we released as a beta our iOS, I mean, sorry, our C++ and Unity SDKs. And these have just went into general availability. In other words, we sh we're very confident they're rock solid and usable for you today. So if you're interested and you're building in C++ or you're building in Unity, you can drop these SDKs into your game right now and be very confident in them. On the cloud side, the server infrastructure is all powered by Google Cloud. And Google Cloud is Google's infrastructure as a service tool that lets you build out crazy, crazy complex things. So if you were building a very advanced MOBA and everyone wanted to come play your game and you had t millions and millions of users every second, you'd probably want to look at Google Cloud. Uh, that's a very specific use case and it's something that Firebase isn't really looking at supporting. There's a ton of general things in that situation that Firebase would help you with, but if you're going really advanced and more specifically really specific, you can look at Google Cloud. And when we, when we were looking at building Firebase, we decided to build on Google Cloud, one, so that we can say we're building on the things that we expose to you, so you're, you can use the exact same tools we do, but also because we knew it really was a great platform which had the scalability and the stability that we wanted to bring to you. Because the cloud service doesn't have much benefit if it's always falling over, and we definitely did not want that with Firebase. So who is Firebase really for? This concept of cloud providers is something that, in general, depending on who you are, it might seem really scary. I mean, I think in general, it's actually really scary. People think, uh, is it going to scale? Is it going to grow with me? Or am I going to hit a point where Firebase doesn't work for me anymore? And this goes back to the scalability part of Google Cloud. We really, really wanted to build a solution that would keep growing with you. So if you were 10 people, or if you were, your company was 1,000 people, if you had 10 users or 100 million, we wanted Firebase to be able to keep up with you so you wouldn't have to be concerned. Um, like I said, there are features and situations where if you wanted something super, super specific, we can help you grow into Google Cloud, but Firebase itself is designed to scale incredibly, incredibly well. And beyond that, beyond the technical part, 
Firebase is always for people who want to focus on their users. Like I said before, this isn't just a focus of tailoring experiences. Tailoring an experience is great. Like that's super important to building a game that connects with people, tweaking things and letting them experience a the game in a way that feels all their own. But it's also about, as a business, where are you putting your focus? At the end of the day, as a gamer, I don't care what cloud provider is supporting my game. I really don't care if it's on AWS, if it's on Google Cloud, if it's on any other service. It doesn't make a difference to me as the player. But what does make a difference is how much love got put into the experience that I am playing. And if you have 10 people, you have only so much time. And you have only so much time to dedicate to technical decisions. You have only so much time to dedicate to gameplay and to designing an experience. And by allowing us the ability to control the servers, to do all your operations, to do all of these other things that come with running servers, you, we ensure that you do not have to think about that. We give you more time to focus on your core experience. So although none of these things are tools which generally directly relate to gameplay, they'll all improve it by giving you back focus. And that focus comes to the user and lets them have a, a really beautiful experience in your game. And again, we can see all of these features, all of these tied back to analytics. Every single one of these is small and understandable and usable, but it's a huge, huge time sink to do on your own. Real-time database is a great example of this. The Firebase real-time database is something that if you have, for example, a matchmaking system where you just want to say, I'm available for a match, and anyone else can say, I'm interested in a match, and you can get paired up. In general, that's a very complicated thing to make. That is definitely non-trivial. And you'd have to spend a significant amount of engineering effort building up real-time communication layers and trying to scale sockets and dealing with a lot of complexity. But with the real-time database, you don't have to worry about that. You can import our client, you can start writing data, you can start receiving updates to all of your other players, and you can do that in a way that is just very simple, very understandable, and feels natural in your environment. That's a very important part. We want everything to feel natural. So if you're building C++, it'll feel natural. Unity, it will feel natural for you as a developer. So if we add Firebase Analytics, which is the core, the, you know, great starting place, to our game, this is the code we have to write. Um, you'll realize it's not a lot of code. In fact, it is the definition of no code. And this is because Firebase Analytics, by default, d is, is so tailored for mobile experiences. It knows so much about what every mobile developer needs and every game developer is going to want that we don't have to think about uh, forcing you to report events. So there's a ton of things like opening, a, opening the app, installing the app, doing an in-app purchase, recording retention, all of these things you don't have to think about. Just by including Firebase Analytics in your game, it starts rep recording all of that and providing it to you in a dashboard. So in the simple use case, there is no code for you to write. You drop it in, and you're good to go. In a slightly more advanced use case, you can write a few lines of code. But frankly, it would take you a lot of effort to write a lot of Firebase Analytics code. It is a very succinct uh, SDK that lets you just report what you need to report. So in this case, we're adding in a you know, custom game event saying, oh, I went to this level, I uh, you know, began playing it, and we're recording the value of that level. So I can go back into my analytics and I can say, all right, this person started this level five times. Or more interestingly, on average, people tried this level 22 times before they beat it. And that's the type of insight that's super valuable, but incredibly, incredibly cheap. It's one line of code to get that into your game. And once we get that into our game, we can immediately start seeing it. And this is one of my favorite, favorite parts about Firebase Analytics, is that in the first few seconds, we're not waiting days to understand if our implementation is correct. We're not waiting days to make sure all of our analytics re events are reporting. In the first few seconds, you can go on your development device, and you can start seeing a stream of those events coming in. So if you're building uh, a game like this where we have that flow, I'm recording a level select event, level beginning, if they completed the level. So we can see they restarted there. And this is just me testing on my device. But this allows me to know that all of my tooling is in there, and it's working as I would expect. So I'm not shipping the game and then finding out later that, oh, I forgot to record this type of event, or we're missing this. We know seconds after we put that code in that everything's working great and everything's reporting. And the even cooler part about this is that you can see those built-in events, all of that stuff that we know you're going to want, it's already in there, and it's showed up here too. 
So for example, over in our top event, we see a user engagement event. And this is just a type of event that Firebase Analytics records for you automatically. And down here, we see some custom user properties. And again, these are things that Firebase Analytics is just recording for you. And in this case, we know exactly when we opened our app. So for example, I started this at exactly 5 PM. And we'll get information like this all the way through, all automatically reported, up until they uninstall the app. Hopefully, they will never get to uninstalling your app. But if they do, you will have a complete view of the life cycle of that user. And again, we can obviously dive in here. We can see more. We can see, all right, this definitely came from a Unity player activity. So we're 100% sure this is where it's coming from. We get other information. We get that level ID that we logged. Um, and we can dig into this if we want. But this is really for development. This is for testing and making sure everything is looking great. And it's really good at that. But we're not going to collect a bunch of users' information in this way, because if you have a big game, it would just be like crazy, crazy numbers of events. If only we had something that let you look at a ton of users kind of condensed down into an understandable way. Well, maybe we do. If you go a few hours out, you've shipped your game, you, know, you have a good user base, so you, you get a lot of data rolling in. We can see this other really cool view called the stream view. And this is a near real-time view of all the data coming into your analytics. In this situation, we're just showing the geographic hot, hot map uh, or heat map of where everyone is and what they're doing. But we can already see general trends emerging. So we can see you know, the majority of players of this game are you know, in that section of the US. That could be due to the time of day or it could be due to whatever. Uh, but we also see down below how many people are currently in our game. In this case, it's 136. Uh, we can see the top user property. So in this case, that's just an API version. But if you are logging other user properties, it could be, oh, right now the majority of players online are playing because they, they want to know about football, or they're playing because they're doing this. You can see um, a great overview here. We can also see app versions. And if you want, um, I, don't ha I don't have details on it, but you can see random user snapshots. So you can get a view very similar to that debug view for just a random user. So if you're curious about what they're seeing and what they're experiencing, you can dive into a specific user. So once we're past that, like that dashboard's really cool. It's nice to see in real time you know, what people are doing and how they're interacting with your game. But it's, it's not going to be something that you can take and present to you know, a CEO type person or someone who really cares about this data. It's, it's nice to see, it's really cool, it's really insightful and you can learn a lot, but that's not the end result. So after a few days of recording information, we, got, we get enough data that we get to see trends. And we get a whole bunch of trends. We can get a bunch of this data all for free. And in this case, we're recording everything from in-app purchase revenue to active users and retention cohorts, information about the device, what OS are they on, what version are they on. This is all information from your game. This is all stuff that our analytics package can pick up and report for us, which is great. But this is kind of where the magic of Google comes in. And this is something that Google is really great at. You probably don't notice, but Google knows a fair bit of information about you. We, we really care about customizing our experiences for every, uh, every individual person. And so like, if you go to Google search, it's probably different than my Google search. You'd never notice, but we care a lot about customizing and changing things for each individual user. And with all this information we have, we thought, well, wouldn't it be great if we could surface some of that into our analytics tool. So they're not just giving uh, or getting information about what people are doing in their game, but they're getting a context about who these people are. So down here in the bottom right, you can see location. And you could maybe speculate about how we could get location from your game. We could, we could probably guess it somehow. But that information is actually coming from Google's knowledge database about these people. So you'll get information about where they're located. You'll get information about gender or age or general interest categories. So you'll get a bunch of information that's not coming from your app, but that helps improve your view of your players and a better understanding uh, because we can enrich this with Google data. That's one of my favorite magical things about Firebase Analytics. We just get so much cool data so cheaply. And if you were to implement all this in your app, everything we've showed here, it would be those, you know, log Firebase events. We do like three events uh, for our custom level stuff, and all of this comes in for free. This is just dropping in that SDK. So how much is this? This is, this is a great question, right? You're probably thinking this is going to be like a per user model or some very, very expensive price tag. Obviously, it's going to be super expensive. And I wouldn't point out, 
and I wouldn't put all this dialogue into this if it actually was super expensive. Firebase Analytics is completely free. So whether you have 10 users or 100 million, it's gonna cost you the same, which is nothing. You can log as many events as you want. Uh, well, there are some restrictions on events, but it's not because you're not paying us, it's just some, some interesting parts of analytics. But you can log tons of different things, you can report a ton of different data, and it is all completely free. One of the great things, though, as we were building Firebase and we were thinking about how to make Firebase analytics as powerful as we possibly could, we wanted to make it clear that every part of Firebase was working together and every part of Google was working together with Firebase. So we were thinking, all right, we have all these built-in charts, we have all this great data that we're showing, but what if somebody wants to go a step further? What if they're using a tool like Data Studio or Tableau or any of these other great visualization tools and they're used to generating really detailed reports? Wouldn't it be great if you could do that with Firebase Analytics? And so we made it so you could. You can export every single event out of Firebase Analytics directly into BigQuery. And BigQuery is a paid service. It's part of Google Cloud. Uh, so the Firebase Analytics part of this is free, but BigQuery is paid. So you can export every single event. And when I say every single event, I literally mean every single event. There's not sampling happening here, and it's just a near real-time feed of everything everyone's doing directly into BigQuery. So if you want to slice that, and you want to dice that, and you want to understand exactly what every single person in your game is doing, you can do that with BigQuery. And from here, like I said, you can take it out into a bunch of different tools. BigQuery is mostly accessed through a SQL-like interface, but you can uh, pull it out into a bunch of different tools, all designed specifically to deal with big data sets like this. Now sadly, we're already uh, pretty far into this and we can't cover all of Firebase Analytics and we can't cover all of uh, Firebase for sure, but we can take a look at it. So I wanna show you a demo of a game that the, uh, the, actually the people who are working on the Firebase Unity SDK and the C++ SDK put together. And this is a game called Mecha Hamster. So let me just hop over to my camera. And we'll see my fantastic phone here. So this demo, if I can unlock my phone, is a simple game. It's a marble roller style game where you, you know, explore a world and get to, uh, get to the end, which is always super exciting. And this is kind of the cool part about Firebase, is that this idea, this game, isn't you know, crazy innovative. It's not something that we've never seen before. But we can make it better, we can make it more interactive, more social, by putting Firebase features in it. So right out of the gate, we have this option to create an account, sign in later. This is Firebase authentication. Just doing account management in a general situation would require servers. It would require a fair bit of infrastructure. But we don't need that, so we can go to create an account, and I'll quickly type a, oh, that's close enough. At, luckily, I'm, I'm not gonna have to go through the flow to actually verify this. Man, it's so hard to type like this. <laughs> at, nope, oh, is that, that's display name. That's my bad. All right, I'm, I got a great display name. Abe, at, Abe, dot, Abe. That's a real email address, I wish and a password. You can all see it, it's hello world. Don't log in and mess with my scores. Whoops. Hmm, interesting. Um. Hmm. Wi-Fi must have flickered or something. Okay, so we got into our game, we just signed in with Firebase Authentication, and we have access to the Mecha Hamster Adventure. Now there's a few components of this that I wanna walk you through. The first one is very simple. Let's go play a level. And if we were building this game in a traditional way, we would have built these levels beforehand, we would have rolled them up into the data of our game, and we would have shipped it out. But with Firebase, we have the ability to really easily store this information inside of Firebase. So these levels are all stored in the Firebase real-time database. So as I go through here and I roll around and I try and get to the end very, very well, so it looks like I'm great at this game, I know that this level is coming out of the real-time database. So if I wanted to add levels or I wanted to tweak levels, I wouldn't have to redeploy this game. I could just go out and I could edit these levels in my database and they'll get pulled down. Similarly, if I wanna record high scores, I can just submit this score, it's uploaded. It turns out I did not do very well, someone got five seconds on there, but this is also stored in the real-time database. 
So this isn't a crazy new idea, but it's something that generally you would have had to put effort into servers for. You would have had to put effort into infrastructure. And with Firebase, you just don't have to. There's some other great use cases. So since we know all of our levels are stored in the real-time database, we can go a step further and say, why don't we just let people make new levels? So we'll go into the editor, and we'll, we'll design up a level. This is it's going to say A for Abe. There you go. AB is close enough to AB. All right, we'll put that there. Put an exit over here. And there we go. Let's play that, make sure that, that works. Beautiful. Great level. We'll go back to our editor. Now we have the ability to save, share this level, send it around, and it's all stored in the real-time database. Once we do get into saving and sharing, we start getting into other Firebase features, though. So ab is going to be the name of that map. As soon as I upload this, it's going to get published to everyone who wants to know about it. So we're sending out push notifications. We won't get one on this device, but if you had this game installed, you'd get a thing saying, hey, a new level has been released on Mecha Hamster. You can go play that. If I want, I can click share, and I can share it out to a bunch of different friends and people like that. I sadly have no friends on this device, but if I had recent contacts, they'd be showing up down there. Then we can just go ahead and head back to our main level. Oops. And we can let people experience that game. So these are things, like I said, this isn't crazy. It's not anything ridiculous. It's just easier for you. And it's less effort for you to maintain this game over time. It gets taken care of by Firebase. And if something does go down, if one of the servers falls over or anything like that, we know that it's going to come back to uh, Firebase to take care of that. And it's just, it's just a nicer way to build an app. So re real quick, let's recap what we just saw. So we signed in with Firebase Authentication. Obviously, no one noticed. The, you know, the player doesn't notice that we're using Firebase Authentication. They just know they made an account. They made a level. That's great. Then we use the real-time database to load levels to create a level. We use cloud messaging to send out push notifications to everyone who cared. And we use Firebase Analytics to record all of this so we know what everyone is doing. All of this without servers. All of this without infrastructure and without cloud and everything like that that you don't want to think about. All we did as a developer is include our SDK in there, you know, call out to some services, and let Firebase do its magic. So this whole section is, who is Firebase for? And the answer is Firebase is for anyone, any game, big or small. Uh, there's always something in here that's going to be useful. And we looked at that gigantic chart of all these different features. And what it comes down to is that any one of those features could be useful to you. But in all likelihood, all of them won't be. You won't want to put in all 15 features into your game. So if we're forcing you to include a gigantic SDK you're not going to use, uh, it's not going to be in your best interest. So if you only want to use Firebase authentication, if you only want to use analytics, you can drop that in independent of you know, dynamic links or remote config. You don't have to deal with those if you don't want to. Yeah, obviously, you can, and they all work better together. But every individual component of Firebase is designed to be used alone with the addition of the, of the Firebase core, which is the, the shared bits. So what's, what's upcoming for Firebase? What is next in the Firebase world? Well, the Firebase SDK for Unity and C++ is now officially out of beta. It's general availability. It's been public for almost a year, but you can go out and download it and uh, be very confident in stability and everything like that. We've spent a bunch of time talking with game developers, making sure this is something that really connects with everyone. Um, and besides that, there's a bunch of crazy stuff. But here's the thing. Firebase is a product that's always growing. We're always working on cool new things because we're working towards this idea of this platform where you will never have to deal with servers. We just don't want you to have to think about it. So since Firebase SDK uh, for Unity and for C++ is relatively new, it's just coming, out of general or just coming into general availability, this is a fantastic time to dive in and give us your feedback. We're still shaping Firebase today, and we want your feedback from game developers specifically to know how we can make this amazing for you. We think it's amazing, but we want to know, and we want to know what else we can do. So if you're interested in this at all, and you're, even if you're thinking, well, I'm not quite sure this is perfect for me, go dive in. And please, you can email me, tweet at me. I'll make sure it gets directly to the team who is, uh, who is working on it so we can really, really make this something that works great for you. So with that, uh, I'm pretty much out of time at exactly 30 minutes. I'm going to hand it over to Lisa and Harry to talk about uh, audio-based games. So thanks for listening.